man leading in points after two races, George Homer with 21. In second place, Peter Revson with 19 points. Bobby Unser is third with 18 points. David Pearson has 15 points. He is tied with A.J. Foyt, who also totals 15 points after two races. Mark Donahue has 13 points. Tied for sixth place with Dennis Hall, 13 points. Emerson Fittipaldi, 11 points. Richard Petty has nine points. Bobby Allison, eight points. Roger McCluskey, seven points. And Gordon Johncock, seven points. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson here at the Riverside International Raceway. It's a blistering hot day in Southern California as we go to the last of the elimination races. And from this race, the six drivers with the most number of points, the top six point totals, will go on to the Daytona International Motor Speedway for the final event. And the final event pays $41,000 in cash and an enormous amount of prestige will go to the man who wins this international race of champions. Now, as you have seen in the point totals, there are eight people very much in the running. Security perhaps belongs to the top three people in the point totals, those being George Fulmer with 21 points, Peter Ebsen with 19, and Bobby Unser with 18. So that's just three. The other three spots are literally wide open. Let's spend a moment with Jackie Stewart, our colleague on these international race of champions, a man who has won more Grand Prix titles than any other, 27 of them. And Jackie, the heat strikes me as being an initial factor today. It could be, Keith. I think the possibility is more mechanical uh, than driver right. fatigue because the drivers are used, of course, to driving in hot conditions, particularly the stock car drivers, but the cars themselves could suffer. Things like brakes, tires, etc. could could be a problem with some temperatures. But I think the whole business, as you said earlier, is going to be, in a way, the way the drivers tackle the event. It's going to be big that's going to play a big, that's going to play a big part. George Fulmer has a handy lead, but he's got to stay out of trouble because if he dings somebody else or gets into a, a sort of small accident situation, spins off the track, he also could lose his big advantage. I think to make the cut here, we've got to remember that when the boys go to Daytona, there's only going to be six of them there and then they start all over again. The points are not of no importance there at all. So this race for them today is terribly, terribly important. It's interesting too as we check the starting grid for this third elimination race now. There are some people up in front starting up in front who literally don't have much of a chance to make the final. Those would be McCluskey, John Cock, Petty, and Allison, and perhaps Holm. But yet there they are sitting up in front of the pack. They could influence the race considerably because if other people can't get past them, if they're having trouble because of the enormously similarity in the performance of those cars, because, you know, as everyone knows, those cars are all the same. There's no advantage performance-wise with either one or the other. To get past other cars is very difficult. Really, people have got to make mistakes to get past. And if the middle runners or the back runners can't get up to the front there and get through, it is going to be a problem. All right, just a few moments ago, before the drivers headed for their cars and the starting grid, Jackie Stewart walked among them and uh, sampled their opinion, talked to them about strategy and what we might expect in this third elimination race for the International Race of Champions. George Fulmer, you're the man that's leading on the points situation just now. How are you going to run this third race? Well, Jackie, I've got to go for uh, a, a fairly high position. I understand uh, mathematically that it looks like I have to get five points uh, to uh, assure myself a trip to Daytona. So first of all, that'll be my uh, main objective. If I can do better, then of course I'll try to, to, to get more. But uh, basically, I'm looking for five points. Right. Now, because you have this lead, are you going to drive a defensive race? Well, I'm going to drive the finish. Of course, I, I feel that I've, uh, in a series of this type, one has to drive uh, to finish. You can't, uh, you, you can't get points if you're, not, if, you're, if you're not finishing or if you're way in the back. AJ, you're in a tie for fourth and fifth position going into this third race. Only six people go to Daytona. It's obviously very important. This is quite true, Jackie. Uh, the biggest thing I've been trying to do is just finish in the top six till we get to Daytona. And today, I'm going to have to make sure I run in the top six to uh, get a position. So I'll probably have to run a little harder today than I have been the other two races. You've got to stay out of trouble, though. 
this is quite true. Uh, this is one thing. I've had a little difficulty. It's been myself, actually, with the uh, smaller cars, getting used to them. But uh, uh, the other day, the uh, race, I enjoyed, you know, the uh, second race uh, quite a bit because I kind of got used to the car. And uh, so I think we'll be all right today. Mark, you're in a tight position as far as the cut for this third race is concerned to go to Daytona. It is important for you. How are you going to run it? Well, I think that now I'll have to take a very conservative view. Uh, uh, in the last race, why uh, almost everybody could run flat out and, and see where the points uh, ended up. But now I'm starting on the, on the pole for this race. But uh, it's not so important to win the race as it is to finish with enough points to go to the last race, which is the, the most important of all. So it's a difficult uh, way to conduct yourself for 30 laps on the racetrack. I don't know how exactly I'm going to do it yet. So we're not going to see a charging Mark Donahue? No, not at all. Uh, I, to win would be really super, but on the other hand, uh, I can't do that uh, at the risk of, of making a mistake. Now, what about the nervous situation? You know, you're sometimes a nervous driver before a race, and other times you're cool. Now, what's your position before this race? I'm very nervous. Uh, I'm always nervous uh, inside, but sometimes it's not enough to show on the outside. But uh, I'm more nervous now than I think I've been in a long time. As you look at the starting grid, perhaps this phrase best sums up this moment for these 12 champions. It'll be a race of logic versus emotion, and luck will be the foundation for both. The start in a moment. The pace car is off the track, and here we go with the third elimination race in our international race of champions. When this race is done, six drivers will have been eliminated. Here's the green flag. Mark Donahue in the black car jumps off the pole and grabs the lead. Heading into the S's, they're tightly jammed in the middle of the pack. George Fulmer moving up out of the back. Peter Ravson is off the track in the dirt. Bobby Allison and A.J. Ford kind of forced Peter Ramson to the outside. He hit the dirt but hung on. And look at the lime green car. That is George Fulmer. He has charged all the way from 12th place into number 7th position already. That side of the track opened up for Fulmer, and he exercised opportunity as he has been doing all the way in this competition. George Fulmer, I think, is the biggest surprise as, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, Keith, because he's come right up from the back and he's in seventh position even before he got to number six turn. This is a fantastic thing. There he is. Now, this is the difference in the psychology of racing drivers. George Fulmer, knowing he's still got to look after himself, not get himself in trouble, has come from the back and charged all the way through. Now, Emerson Fittipaldi, on the other hand, has stayed right at the back of the field. There he is in the dark car, right at the tail end of the field, obviously not sticking his neck out too far. Well, as many of them indicated before the race started, they did not want to get themselves in a position where they had to take risks. And so far, none have, with the possible exception of George Fulmer, as you stated. That is Mark Donahue in the black car in the lead. In second place, it is Denny Holm. Denny Holm started this last race with only 13 points, and he knows full well he has to finish well up to make the trip to Daytona for the final, where the big money is. That point situation is very tough for these three men in particular. Emerson Fittipaldi, who's right at the back end of the field, Denny Holm, of course, who's sitting in second place, and A.J. Foyt, all a very tight, tight bunch there for points. Mark Donahue now running it smooth as silk, coming through the turns once Donahue gets in front. David Pearson is off the track. David Pearson in the blue car just kind of sawed it off and went into the dirt. And as a result, he falls all the way back to 11th position. So David Pearson got caught in traffic, no place to go, and had to hit the dirt and it cost him. He didn't keep his feet in it though, he stayed on the road and he kept going. This is a typical example of David Pearson, a really hard driver with a clean, clean, fast mind. But David Pearson doesn't really have it made either because he goes into this final race tied with A.J. Ford with 15 points. Emerson Fittipaldi, who continues to trail the field, 11 points, and Emerson almost certainly needs a victory in this third race in order to make the final. Now as they come sweeping around, Turn nine, heading for the end of the second lap. It is Mark Donahue, Denny Hull, Gordon Johncock, Richard Petty, Roger McCluskey, Bobby Allison. So Mark Donahue, who started this third race with a total of 13 points, has the lead at the end of lap number two. 
At the end of this race, six drivers will be eliminated. We'll be right back with more. We've got quite a war developing back here in the fight for fourth place. The white car being driven by Richard Petty is holding fourth right now. He's sideways. He's off the track, back in the dirt, goes way deep in the dirt, and one, two, three, four, five cars go by him. So Richard Petty will go from fourth place way back toward the back of the pack. And the man who moves up into that fourth position right now will be Roger McCluskey. But they're all so tightly grouped, we'll have an enormous challenge, and we have to have one before we go much farther around this racetrack. Now let's set the field for you. On the colors, it is Mark Donahue in the black car leading. In second place in the green car, it's Denny Holm. Gordon Johncock, third in the red car. Then comes Roger McCluskey, dark blue. Bobby Allison, light blue. A.J. Foyt, orange. George Fulmer, lime green. Bobby Unser in the purple, and then it's David Pearson. And Bobby Allison gets a little bit wide. He picks off a little dirt there and then jams the entire field together. So now we've got about eight cars very close together. Particularly four cars. I think Bobby Allison's uh, bad maneuver in that last turn there really crammed them together. And all these cars are very close. On this main street, there's got to be drafting and I think going to be passing. A.J. Foyt's going to make his pass and he's trying to pass. And two more cars are going past. Unser's followed Foyt all the way through. George Fulmer's through there, and Allison is back there. This is the replay from the isolated camera. As they come over, A.J. Foyt overtakes, and Bobby Unser follows them through. George Fulmer's in the line car there, and of course Bobby Allison, who was in front of that bunch, is now at the back of that pack. You can see just how quickly things can change. A tiny little mistake, and suddenly Bobby Allison lost three places and roger mccluskey driving that dark blue car is now beginning to show some smoke so he may be getting in some trouble in the meantime it's aj Foyt being followed very closely by bobby unser in that pack and mark donahue here leads denny hall running in second place gordon john cock is running third here's mccluskey in fourth place and he apparently is having some kind of trouble Bobby Allison hanging in there, David Pearson in the dark blue car there, running right behind Allison, who's in the light blue, has suddenly moved back into contention in this group. A.J. Foyt up here in that orange car now being pressed by Bobby Unser, Denny Holm, and uh, A.J. Foyt among those who need some points vitally, and here comes Unser living up alongside Foyt, trying to get by and picked up a little bit of draft, and he's got him. Coming through turn number nine, Bobby Unser now passes A.J. Ford and George Fulmer closes on him. So it is Mark Donahue, Denny Holm, Gordon Johncock, Roger McCluskey, Bobby Unser, A.J. Ford in that order. And again, I'll point out here that Roger McCluskey in the dark blue car is having some trouble, and Bobby Unser just passed McCluskey right there, and A.J. Ford closes right behind him. So apparently Roger McCluskey is having some kind of mechanical difficulties in his car. It is now Ford running alongside, and McCluskey's off the racetrack. Can he hold it? He runs Ford off the track. Ford holds him. So Roger McCluskey with a great piece of driving there off the track, but did not lose his position. I think he's scared of half a dozen people, though. David Pearson, you can see now, in the blue car has moved past Bobby Allison, so David's back in the thick of things. That's Allison right there on the left of the screen, Roger McCluskey, the dark blue, A.J. Ford in the orange, George Fulmer, the light green, and you see the smoke coming out of McCluskey's car. Watch McCluskey in the dark blue car, see if he starts slowing down. He has slowed some, I think, and he has served to compact the group even more so. Here comes Foyt, passing Roger McCluskey. Fulmer pulls in tight behind him. McCluskey's car looks sick, Jackie. Yep pouring out oil there it doesn't happen all the time it looks like oil surge is causing this because it puffs and then it dries out and puffs again There's, and two cars together Pearson and Fulmer side by side as they go around turn one and David Pearson in the right place at the right time nips George Fulmer and moves up and here he comes past McCluskey McCluskey's off the track again is he going to nip Fulmer no George got by him and McCluskey's off the track again so Roger really having some trouble keeping that sick machine of his on the racetrack. 
Mark Donahue is the leader. We'll be back in just a moment. Roger McCluskey pulling into the pits. Could be that Roger McCluskey is through for this race. If so, he is eliminated. He's the first man to be eliminated from the International Race of Champions. Now, the other three people who are in imminent danger of being eliminated as well are Richard Petty, Bobby Allison, and Gordon Johncock, because they started with very few points. Meantime, Mark Donahue looks pretty secure, running up in first place. Denny Holm is in second place. And Gordon Johncock, who's been holding third place now, is passed by Bobby Unser. Unser goes into third place. And Gordon Johncock apparently is having some car trouble as well. As you see the smoke come out of his car, A.J. Foyt and the orange machine pulls right in behind him, and the blue Porsche right behind Foyt is David Pearson, and both of them pass John Cock, and here comes George Fulmer in the lime green car, and he too will go by Gordon John Cock. So obviously Gordy has a problem with his car. David Pearson's not going to give up either. He's just firewalling it, and he goes right on past A.J. Foyt. No drafting there. Pearson just shoved his foot all the way home and went right by A.J. And now A.J.'s got to back off a little as they come out of turn number nine because as the cars swing close to the wall, there just isn't enough room to run tandem. So it's David Pearson running in fourth place in his five and George Fulmer in sixth place closing in behind him. The point total is very important here for people like A.J. Foyt, David Pearson, Mark Donahue, Dennis Holm, Emerson Fittipaldi. Right now, Fulmer, Revson, and Unser look fairly secure because they came in with 21, 19, and 18 points respectively. Roger McCluskey confirmed, out of the race, first man eliminated. Let's go to the pits now. Here's Jackie with Gordon Duncan. Gordon, you were going very well then. Oh, yes, Jackie. Uh, this is the third race, and uh, I've always been ever since my racing career. You know, it normally takes me a couple, three races to <clears throat> get onto an automobile, especially the course here at Riverside. I haven't run here, I think, since about 1967, and I just never have been one to jump right in an automobile and run fast right off the bat. But we started fourth in this one. I was running third until the throttle froze, and uh, just couldn't. The only way I could drive it was with the key, and you just can't do that on a road. Well, all right, Jackie, thank you. Mark Donahue leads, Denny Holmes second, Bobby Yonsa third, David Pearson four, A.J. Ford five, George Fulmer six. Emerson Fittipaldi's really come up, though. I think Emerson Fittipaldi started very cautiously, but in fact is really performing now. He's driving very hard, and here he comes up the inside of number nine as usual. And that's him into seventh position now. Emerson Fittipaldi, who did start a long way back, and as you know, George Boomer made that charge early in the race. He's now behind George Boomer, and this is quite a lot of fast driving. But Fittipaldi has the pressure on him. He started this race with only 11 points. He's back in seventh, and he's got to do some tall driving. The International Race of Champions. We'll be back with more, but right now to Bob Biatti in San Moritz, Switzerland. As we resume our coverage of the International Race of Champions, Mark Donahue in the black car has a substantial lead over Denny Holm in the green car. Bobby Unser running in third place. Then comes the pack of David Pearson, A.J. Foyt, George Fulmer, Emerson Fittipaldi seventh now, Peter Revson eighth, Bobby Allison nine, Richard Petty ten. There are ten cars running. Two drivers have been eliminated already. Roger McCluskey and Gordon Johncock are parked. So right now, for all intents and purposes, based on their posture in the race, Bobby Allison and Richard Petty could be considered eliminated as well because Richard Petty had nine points and Bobby Allison only eight points going into this third elimination race. And in effect, Jackie Stewart, what we have boiled it down to, we have eight automobiles running for six spots to go to the final next Saturday in Daytona where the big money and the championship will be decided. It also seems that we've got David Pearson playing a very cool race here. He seems, in my opinion, to be holding up this pack here. He seems to be driving very carefully. Now, if I were in his position at this time, I believe I would be doing the same thing because I would hate to make a mistake. If I were to make a mistake at this point, I would lose everything. So therefore, David Pearson is not a silly man. He's a very experienced man, and this is the way he's driving. He may be holding the others up right now, but he's certainly not allowing himself to be pressured into a mistake. And I'm certain that he's aware of the fact that fourth or fifth place will deliver enough points to him to guarantee him the trip to challenge for the championship as well. The one man here, however, is going to be Emerson Fittipaldi. Behind these three cars that we see leading here, Emerson Fittipaldi has come up in this pack. 
And this is substantial at this time because Emerson Fittipaldi knows that he's got to make points at this time. Fittipaldi has been, in, he's making the pass now, he's going past George Fulmer, he's going up inside the lime colored car, Fittipaldi in the dark black car there, going into turn nine and has taken the place from George Fulmer. So Emerson Fittipaldi now is in sixth position. He's worked his way from the back of the pack. He now sits sixth and he's certainly in a position where he can put the challenge on A.J. Foyt. Foyt running right behind Pearson. David there in the blue car and he continues to run what apparently is a very comfortable pace for him. Mark Donahue is the leader. So these four cars are the ones we really have to keep our eye on right here. Frustration must be an obvious element as well at this point. All the drivers immediately behind. I think A.J. Foyt's got enough experience to sit there and just wait for the slightest error of judgment in David Pearson. But on the other hand, if any of them fluff a gear change or do anything wrong, the others are going to take advantage. And in the point situation as we know it, this is going to be very crucial. running very well, running on a groove now. There are your three leaders, Donahue, Hall, and Unser, and here they come down under the bridge. David Pearson leading the pack still, and we see him split, and coming out from under the bridge, we have a change as Emerson Fittipaldi and now George Fulmer go past A.J. Foyt. Richard Petty is in the pits. So the first man to win a million dollars in NASCAR Grand National Stock Car Racing has hit the pits and he may be the third man officially eliminated. Nimerson Fittipaldi slips wide and wobbles in the turn and loses ground to David Pearson. So as Richard Petty gets out of his car and leaves the international race of champions, Emerson Fittipaldi almost made a very big mistake. You know the race is over here for Richard Petty because the hood is up, the engine is sick, he's unbuckled, and the racing is done for Richard. Bobby Allison has cooked an engine apparently. That much smoke blowing out of the back of his car should take him out of it. So we've got eight cars running with Mark Donahue, Denny Hall, Bobby Unser, David Pearson continues in fourth, and Emerson Fittipaldi running in fifth. David Pearson leading down the back straight, but Emerson Fittipaldi looks like he's getting into position to draft and pass, and that's what he's doing. He once again drafts past David Pearson and gets into fourth position. Emerson Fittipaldi picked up another spot. It remains to be seen how much ground he can make up now on the third man. There is a large gap between Fittipaldi in fourth and Bobby Unser in third. Fittipaldi needs every single point that he can get. You almost get the feeling that somebody else is going to have to make a mistake for the representative of Formula One Grand Prix Racing to make the trip to Daytona to run for the championship. The leader is Mark Donahue. In second place, Denny Hall running third. Bobby Unser, Emerson Fittipaldi now four. Back in a moment. running for a chance to go to the final race in Daytona next Saturday, four to five Eastern time. Bobby Allison, the latest driver to leave the race. Jackie Stewart is with Bobby on pit road. Bobby, you're a little bit out of breath. I oh, just feel disgusted, Jackie. Uh, I felt like it was a bad car in the first race and uh, it certainly didn't run good in the second race either. And uh, when I drew it again for the third race, I asked for another car, but I guess that was against the rules. And, uh, it wouldn't turn but about 7,000 RPM, which made it uncompetitive. And uh, the transmission still wouldn't shift in the car. It was exactly like it was in the first race. And uh, Bobby Unser had the same complaint with it in the second race. However, he, he did finish the race. And I guess it's just one of those things. But uh, well, Bobby, you've got 12 cars, I guess you've got to have a lemon in one of them. Well, Bobby, we're all very disappointed. You won't be going to Daytona, but we wish you the best in all these other races. Thank you, Jack. Eight cars are running now. Donahue leads. Unser and Holm both look healthy. Holm sitting in second place. Unser running third. Emerson Fittipaldi is sitting in fourth position. 
and the pressure here is really on Emerson Fittipaldi and also the pressure is beginning to build on A.J. Foyt because A.J. is sitting back there in the number seven position and he didn't have a very comfortable points margin going into this final elimination race. He started this race with 15 and he can't get too far back. Emerson Fittipaldi, however, has been a most dramatic figure of late as he has worked his way from the back of the pack and come right on up into that number four position. David Pearson there in the blue car is running in fifth and George Fulmer, light green, running in the number six position. Point there in the orange. There's a yellow flag. Something's happened. Who is it? Where is it? It is Denny Holm. Denny Holm has spun out and leaves the racetrack. And Emerson Fittipaldi goes into third place. David Pearson moves into fourth. George Fulmer takes fifth. Peter Rapson coming on up here, and he also will pass Denny Holm. So what a bad piece of luck for Denny. Jackie, what are your comments on this sudden dramatic turn of events? Well, it's been a fantastically exciting race. Emerson Fittipaldi came from right from the back. Right from the back, through all of those cars, did a beautiful job. Some of the best driving I've seen him doing for a long time. Denny Holm had himself really well placed to go to Daytona, and he's spun. Now, whether he's going to manage to get to that trip or not, only the last few laps are going to tell. A terrific race so far. And perhaps therein lies the tale of a thing called racing luck. Mark Donahue is way out here in front. We have, in effect now, moved it down to a seven-car race with Holm dropping back. Five cars seem set. The struggle would be now between A.J. Foyt and Emerson Fittipaldi. We'll have more racing shortly, but now let's go to Frank Gifford in Dallas. We pick up our coverage of the International Race of Champions with less than two laps to go. The running order is this. Mark Donahue in first place. Bobby Unser is the second. Emerson Fittipaldi third. David Pearson four. George Fulmer five. A.J. Foyt six. Peter Revson seven. Danny Holm eight. The struggle now between Foyt driving the orange car. Emerson Fittipaldi driving the black car in third place. If the running order remains the same through the checkered flag, here's the point situation. Fittipaldi finishing third would get 10 points, giving him a total of 21. A.J. Foyt running sixth would get seven points, giving him a total of 22. And thus Foyt would take by one point the number six position for the championship race. George Fulmer, Bobby Unser, Mark Donahue, Peter Revson, David Pearson, all in their current running position are set for the championship event. So Emerson Fittipaldi sitting up there in third place has to be hoping that Racing Luck is riding with him, that something happens in front of him to move him up one more spot, or something happens behind him to move A.J. Foyt back one place. Jackie, that's a frustrating position to be in. It is indeed, but he's driving very hard. In fact, he's catching up, I think, Bobby Unser in second place, who in fact is closing the gap, I think, to Mark Donahue in the lead, because all three cars can be seen in one picture now. Of course, it's still a big lot of pressure for Emerson Fittipaldi. He obviously desperately wants to get to Daytona. This is very important for him. But of course, there's other things going on in this race right now. A.J. Foyt himself, obviously, is considering this whole situation. David Pearson right there and George Fulmer running right behind Pearson. They're in comfortable shape. They're pretty well set if they can hold those positions. Roger McCluskey, Richard Petty, Gordon Johncock, Bobby Allison all went out of it earlier. This is the final lap. And the two men to really keep our eye on are A.J. Foyt, who is running in sixth place, and Emerson Fittipaldi, who is running in third place. Peter Revson is the man who is crowding A.J. Foyt at this point. Now, Revson's all set, but Peter Revson is a racing driver. And when the opportunity to move comes, he will exercise it. A.J. Foyt is the same kind of a man, but Foyt in this position has to be aware that he can reach inside of himself and use the cunning and guile that comes from years and years and years of very successful automobile racing. Foyt there in the orange car, Revson right behind him, Fittipaldi sitting up there in third place, and of all by himself. Fittipaldi has to move up one place, Foyt has to move back one place, and here is Mark Donahue coming around. Donahue wins the third race. Bobby Unser is second. Emerson Fittipaldi takes third. David Pearson is fourth. George Fulmer five. A.J. Foyt coming along. He takes six, and A.J. Foyt wins the sixth. 
starting position in the championship race, Emerson Fittipaldi, just missed by a single point. We'll be back to sum it up for you in a moment. at the Riverside International Speedway. Here are the six men who have qualified for the championship run. George Fulmer, Bobby Unser, Mark Donahue, Peter Epson, David Pearson, A.J. Ford. Here's Jackie Stewart to talk with them. A.J., pretty close. Very close, Jackie. <laughs> but you're there. Yes, we're there. Uh, we had a couple misfortunes, and I was missing the gear shift pattern. I just missed it and lost a couple spots right there at the end, but that was actually not the car's fault, just my own fault, just for goofing up. Well, we're pleased you're going to Daytona. David, terrific. NASCAR, I'm sure, must be very proud of you. Well, uh, Jackie, I was real proud and said that we are in because uh, we did have a little problem in the first race. We had problem, and this time here, I was having trouble with the brakes locking up, so uh, I was real happy and pleased to get in. I can't think of any more fans down there wishing for you than Daytona's going to have. Well, thank you, Jack. Peter, road racing. That's what this is called, yeah. <laughs> well, I think everybody's going to be happy that you're going to be down there, an American driver, road racing at Daytona. This must mean a lot to you. Oh, yeah, I wanted to go to Daytona, and I'm happy I made it. Very good. Mark, a great race. Very smooth, very clean, no mistakes, always in front. That's very lucky. Uh, starting from the pole position and being able to to see everybody going sideways and backwards behind me, why well, it was it was a great help to get ahead. Bobby, you must be very happy too. Well, I certainly am, Jackie. I uh, did a whole lot better than I expected, and, and uh, I'm very happy about it. Good, charging, George. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> it worked well for you. It went very well, really. I'm very happy to have made the, the final race, and I think uh, everybody that's participated in this event is is very pleased and had a those who didn't make it, I know had a good time. Well, you're in terrific company. I think, Keith, we've got to be very happy at having seen this terrific race. I'm sure you feel that way, too. No question, Jackie. You know, I, I do have one thing that I would uh, point out to you. Uh, we have uh, SCCA, USAC, SCCA, SCCA, NASCAR, and USAC in that order. No Grand Prix? Well, it seems... Uh, what can I say? Uh, I think Emerson was going pretty well there for a while, but I think he had a, a hard time, and uh, Denny, I think, uh, could easily have got in there had he not spun. But there's no ifs and buts in motor racing. I think uh, everyone is fairly and squarely going to Daytona that should be going to Daytona, and I think it's going to be a tremendous race down there. I think we've got a new concept for motor racing, and uh, in a way, I'm sorry I'm not in there for Grand Prix motor racing, but the sport's been very well represented and i really do hope that we're going to see a tremendous race in daytona question about it here again is the final order of finish george fulmer bobby unser 29 points apiece peter Evson, mark donahue 25 david pearson 24 aj ford 22 emerson fittipaldi just missed with 21. the championship finale from daytona international motor speedway next saturday 4 to 5 p.m eastern time over most of these abc stations and we've just learned that Mark Donahue is retiring from motor racing. His final race will be in the championship run next Saturday at Daytona. <laughs>